Shalom, one more praises be unto Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Racha Kodash, double honor unto the elder apostles, the elder bishops at Great Millstone, who were well when he taught us this truth. Salute so unto the Akim who continued to push the word in truth and in sincerity. Um, and uh, pretty much, um, you know, I'm not sure of the title as of yet, but I was just meditating early hours this morning as I was still laying in the bed. Um, upon the sacrifice which um, the Lord told Abraham to make where it concerned his son Isaac. It's a portion of scripture which we briefly, not in depth, but in passing mentioned um, yesterday at the camp. And I was thinking about it, um, as I said earlier, hours this morning, and um, essentially, man, you know, uh, Abraham represents the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and Isaac represents uh, Yahweh Shai, uh, which he was, you know, Isaac. Um, but it was a foreshadowing of what would happen in a future lifetime. Although the conditions would have one significant difference in that there was no replacement lamb. Okay, and um, pretty much the love and dedication that Abraham, in obedience, showed unto the Heavenly Father in that he was willing to sacrifice Isaac, shows the, um, the, the love that the Hawa, the Most High, has for the nation of Israel. Okay, that he will would uh, contemplate, set it up, and go through with it, which he did, to sacrifice his son. You know, <clears throat> and um, in the case of Abraham, there was a replacement lamb. You know, but in the case of the heavenly Father Yahweh, there was no replacement lamb. Right, and that is true love that um, the Father would give his son. Okay, now this is the book of Genesis. <clears throat> and um, this is, I'll start from verse 1 and it says, And it came to pass after these things that the father did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham. And he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son, Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah. And offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. Close this window. Um, and Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him. And Isaac, his son, and clave the wood and burnt offering and rose up and went unto the place of which the father had told him. Then on the third day. Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. Now this shows faith, okay? Because Abraham knew the assignment from the father, which was to sacrifice, okay? But he had believed prior in his heart. That the Lord, Yahweh, would provide. Because he said, I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. Okay. So it was his belief that the Heavenly Father would do something. Whereby he would return with his son. But if it so be that there was no um, replacement. He was willing to go with it and essentially return himself. Okay. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac, his son. And this is the importance of Yahweh Shai. Okay, you know, as people oftentimes say, nobody helps to help, you know. Well, that's exactly it, man. You know, we all have been helped and will continually be helped, you know. But who, who who's there for the main guy, you know? The main guy is the main guy, and that is a heavy role to play, 
you know, because there is no one to turn to. There is no alternative. He is the main guy. And this is why we worship Yahweh Shai. And as I said, this example here in scripture is a foreshadowing of what would be <clears throat> the case between the father and um, the son. But that in that time round, there would be no replacement. Okay. And Abraham, verse 6, and Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac, his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife and they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father, you know, Abaya, and he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? So Isaac realized, because this is something that um, Abraham had done before in terms of sacrifice, <clears throat> and um, to teach his son how to sacrifice, Isaac would have been present at many sacrifices before. So he was used to the setup. You would need the wood, you'd need the fire, you'd need the sacrificial lamb. So in this case, Isaac was getting it, but you see, he, he missed, or he spotted out what was missing, yeah, which was the lamb itself. That's how Isaac knew to ask, because he'd seen his father do it before, right? And Abraham said, my son, Yehoah will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. Okay. Now again, Abraham had already been told of the Lord, the father, that he would have to sacrifice Isaac. So Abraham knew, but it was his belief in his heart that uh, the Lord would provide an escape. Okay, because in this lifetime, <clears throat> Isaac was uh, a representative of who he would be in a future life, Yahweh Shai, being the sacrifice. But in this case, Isaac also represents the nation of Israel, where we should be brought to the altar and slaughtered. Um, as Abraham said, we will return unto you, to his other men that he brought, the two other men, his servants. So, so, so where we should be on the altar, all right, um, the lamb takes the place. As Isaac was on the altar and he was about to be slaughtered, the lamb was provided, okay? Where we should be put to death, all right, and cut off as a people, Yahweh Shai stands in the gap, all right? And they came to the place which the father had told him, and Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son. Now, this would have been traumatic because you can't just nicely talk your son into getting on an altar. As I said, this is something Isaac had seen his father do before. He knows the setup. He knows what's going to happen. So he's not going to be down for it. You know, young Isaac would probably started screaming. He probably had shock. You know, what's my dad doing? You know, in that moment, he realized his dad was trying to basically kill him. You know, he probably would have been screaming for help, but no one could hear him there on a mount, you know, elsewhere on the mount. You know, probably kicking and screaming and Abraham has to rough up his son and tie him up. You know, use force on his son and tie him up, man, and put him on the altar with the wood. Right, and Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And you can imagine the look <clears throat> that Abraham had in his on his in his eyes and as a as Isaac was on the altar looking up at his dad, you know, the man he aspired to be like, the man he loved, the man he also feared, you know, the man he learned from, the man who pretty much was his protector. All of a sudden Things took a nasty turn and this guy who happens to be your father has a knife in the air and he's about to thrust it into you and burn you, man. Okay. Abraham probably had tears in his eyes, but he still was obedient unto what the father said. Okay. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven. Okay. So an angel, a voice of an angel, um, 
you know, was audible, was heard. And said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here am I. And he said, lay not thine hand upon the lad. <clears throat> which, by the way, lad is a Hebrew word, you know, which means boy, young boy. Neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest the father, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked and beheld. Behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered up and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. As I said, Isaac represents the nation of Israel. Right? Where where according to commandment <clears throat> we ought to be slaughtered. Right? For not meeting the mark. There was a ram in the stead of Isaac. But Isaac would come back and there would be no ram in the stead of Yahweh Shai. There would be no alternative in the stead of Yahweh Shai. This is why when he prayed three times unto the Father, there was no answer, which in itself was the answer. No, nope, not this time. You've got to go through with it. And Abraham called the place um, Jehovah Jireh. Um, as it is said to this day in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen now I believe Jehovah Jireh is uh, Yahweh provides um, as we know it would be uh, uh, yep Yahweh Yara'ah Yahweh Yara'ah and um uh, let's see. Yep, and it says here, um, Yahweh who prevented the sacrifice of Isaac and provided a substitute. So Yahweh Yara Ah, um, uh, Yahweh provides or Yahweh will we'll see to it. Meaning that there's, you know, it's already taken care of. If someone sees to something, you know, the necessary um, implications have already been provided, you know. If someone sees to something, it's already been taken care of. So, Yahweh, Yara'ah, Yahweh provides or Yahweh will see to it. He's already scoped it out, you know. Before Abraham set off. Three days prior to that, um, to do this, and only he knew he would do this because it was between him and the father. The Mosai had already provided, he already saw to it that a ram would get stuck in the thicket of a bush and be the substitute. Okay. And the angel of the Lord um, called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time. And this would have been. Um, uh, a chariot afar off in the sky and uh you know speaking with him you know angels in the chariot speaking with him and he said by myself have i sworn and the angels bringing a message from the lord yahweh say of the lord yahweh for because thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thy son thine only son that in blessing i will bless thee and in multiplying i will multiply thy seed that the stars of the heaven, the Shemayim, and at the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies, and it goes on and it goes on. But the main point here is that the Father, Yahweh, he provided Yahweh Yara'ah. Okay. And um, as I said, this is a foreshadowing of what... Um, would be, you know, to the uh, nation of Israel, okay, the second time round, Yahweh Shai was the ram caught in the thicket of the bush, where we should be sacrificed, he is the replacement lamb, okay,
This is the book of John, chapter 1, verse 36. And looking up, Yahawashai, and looking upon Yahawashai as he walked, he saith, Behold, the Lamb of God. Okay. The Lamb of, of, of the Father, man. All right. And, and the primary use of a lamb is to be sacrificed for sin offerings. Okay, because there's many types of offerings, but a major offering type is a sin offering. So Yahweh Shai is that lamb. He is the ram caught in the thicket of the bush. The replacement. Okay. So, uh, you know, I just wanted to go over that, man. You know, Abraham represented the heavenly father. Uh, and Isaac was Yahweh Shai, but it was a foreshadowing. Of what he wouldn't escape in a lifetime to come when he came as Hamashiach, uh, and he indeed was the Lamb of 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 the Father who takes away the sin of the world of Israel, starting with you know the elect, which will get this truth, man. Lord willing, we're of that number. So um, this is why we worship. This is why we praise and exalt the name of Yahweh Shai. Uh, the father himself said, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. He's worthy of glory, honor, praise, esteem and exaltation. Because through him we are redeemed, brought back unto the father. So with that, I'll wrap it up. You know, all praises be unto Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai. Ba'ashem Racha Kodash. Shalom.